In this video, I'll show you how to use Stripe Checkout to create a secure Stripe hosted payments page that you could use to start accepting payments inside of your .NET applications today. For the sake of the demo, I'll be using an example of a box of chocolates from our candy store that we've already gone ahead and had set up inside of our Stripe account. Also, we'll be using a tool from our docs called the Integration Builder that allows us to download pre-configured code samples that makes it that much easier for us to get started with our Stripe integration. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Let's start off by confirming some of the settings inside of our Stripe dashboard. Here on the main page of the dashboard, I'm going to click on the settings on the top right. And underneath business settings, I'm going to click on account details. Underneath the section that says public business information, I want to confirm that our public business name, support email, and also support phone number are configured correctly. This is the information that our users are going to see whenever they need to get in contact with us. Next, back on that main settings page, I'm going to click on emails. I want to make sure that our account is configured to send emails whenever successful payments occur or in case we need to issue refunds to our customers. Now let's take a look at our products. Inside of our available products section, you can see that our dark chocolate collection is already set up. You'll notice it has a name and a price. There's a picture, there's a description. And if we wanted to, we can even add additional metadata in case there's more information that we wanted to be able to add to this product. Now, let's take a look at our integration builder instead of the Stripe documentation. To get started with the integration builder to accept payments, first I'm going to select payments in the top menu. Then I'm going to select accept a payment. Now at the top, notice how we have different options. For this integration, we're going to be using HTML and .NET. So make sure that those are the options you have selected. And as I scroll down, there's going to be a section that says define a product to sell. Now I'm going to select our dark chocolate collection. The documentation is able to find that information because I'm signing with the same Stripe account that I was with the dashboard. So now when I come back up and I download this application, I should be able to have our product keys, our account IDs, and everything else we need to get started with selling products inside of an ASP.NET Core application. Now I've gone ahead and unzipped and opened that sample code that we got from the integration builder in our Stripe documentation. In VS Code, I'm going to take a look at the public folder. And inside of here, you can see that we have a collection of HTML and CSS files. Now the cancel and the success.html files are pages that our customers will get redirected to in case they decided to cancel the payment or if the payment was successful. The main page that they're going to be looking at is the checkout.html that lists our box of chocolates that we're trying to sell them. Now, in your case, you might need to update the description and also the price for the item that you've selected inside of your Stripe account. I've already gone ahead and updated mine. Now let's take a look at the server.html file. Inside of here, we have a pre-configured ASP.NET Core app that allows us to create a checkout session that we could use whenever we're using Stripe Checkout. Now, as you can see here in this particular route, we're creating something called a session create options. So these are options that we're gonna to pass to our checkout service or our session service whenever we need to create a new Stripe Checkout session. What you notice on line 59, we're creating the collection of line items. These are gonna be the products that we wanna show in our checkout page that our customers are gonna buy. On line 64, particularly you'll see that we have a price ID. This is the price ID of the product that you saw inside of our Stripe dashboard. And it also lists the quantity of that particular product at that particular price that we're trying to sell. On line 68, you notice we're passing another option called payment. Now this mode lets Stripe know what kind of payment exactly are we trying to process. So in our case, we just want to do a one-time payment, but we also have the ability to do subscriptions as well. On line 69 and 70, you can see that we're specifying that success and also cancel that HTML files whenever there's a successful payment or if the user decides to cancel it. Now, once those options are created and they're passed on to the Stripe service, now we're going to redirect the user to the Stripe checkout page so they can enter their payment information and successfully buy our box of chocolates. Now, what I'm going to do is open up the terminal and I'm going to type .NET run. What this will do is restore any packages, build our application, and then start it running at that particular port that we had specified. Now, let's head over to the browser and see what this looks like. So here inside of the browser, you can see that our box of chocolates is listed and there's a big old checkout button that our users can select in case they want to buy it. So when I click on this, what's going to happen now is that we're going to get redirected to that Stripe checkout page. I can enter some information. Now the card information I entered here is just a test card. 
And so once this goes through, I'm hoping that we'll have a successful payment. I'm gonna click on pay. And what should happen now is that our checkout page should redirect to that success, that HTML file that we saw. And now at some point, our customers gotta get that box of chocolates that they also wanted so much. I do hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you're curious to learn a little bit more about how checkout works and what you could do with it, please take a look at some of the other videos that are available inside of the series. Also, to get a little bit more detail, head over to our documentation and also our GitHub organization where there's tons of samples that you could look through to get inspired by all of the different things we could do with Stripe Checkout. <laughs>